player one. Blake, Blake, enemies are posted. Two left, look down. Machine guns, two, blood spatters, sprints and ducks behind the abandoned car. Guns come from behind. Triple jump into the castle. On the mission to save Princess Peach. Jump on approaching Goomba. Find the key. Unlock the door to Bounty Thunder. Yeah, fire pipe, backwards kick, two fireball, fatality. Pause. Are you sure you want to exit without saving? My name is Kimberly Remigan, and today I'm going to talk about games. Online games, studio games, arcade games, interactive games. In fact, who in here has played at least once? Look around you. Most of us have gone through that phase where one game has kept its playing until 3 a.m. And the only reason it wasn't 5 a.m. was because of the demand of an English parent or staff that we set that thing off. So, does that make us all gamers? When most people think of a gamer, one of the images usually comes to mind. There's the frat boy who plays GTA and his favorite pastime consists of late night chug. Then, there's the PC aficionado who maintains a minimum of 24 inches away from the computer screen at all times due to access rate in the abdominal area. And last but not least, the double child. Habits include aggressive eye twitching and shouting at mom. These are the negative connotations society has established to what makes a person an efficient gamer. In reality, though, being a gamer can be much more than gaming. The Merriam Webster Dictionary defines a gamer merely as a person who plays games. So, in that sense, yes, we are gamers. But what is a game? Even strictly limiting the subject to electronic games, there are literally thousands out there in countless categories. When I was in middle school, I loved playing Super Mario 64 and Animal Crossing on my way home from school. Contrast that to League of Legends, where incessant keyboard clicking and blasting mythical creatures keeps my brother entertained for hours on end. The different types of games are endless. Just like we wouldn't walk into a restaurant and instantly do it bad because we see a dish on the menu we don't like, we cannot talk about games as a whole as being negative. Yet, society attempts to defend its stereotyping with three arguments. The first is that Gaming induces violence in kids. True, the idea that violence is contagious is a scary thought. However, at this point, it is only speculation. Joseph Owen, president of the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences, claims that there is absolutely no scientific evidence showing a positive correlation between violence in individuals and in the games they play. Referencing studies from the Harvard Medical School Center for Mental Health, the British Medical Journal, and the Journal for Adolescent Health. Yet some people remain skeptical, as there is the misconception that gaming is a solo activity that leads to lack of social drive and skill. On the contrary, half a billion people in the world play games on a daily basis, with 45% of these people being female. With such a large and diverse population of gamers, Gaming has now become an important means of social interaction. As of 2013, 62% of people play with others either online or in person. Companies have transformed their games from initially having no social contact to developing multiplayer options like chatting open mic. And gamers themselves have created a gaming culture where many share the same passions and interests even outside of gaming. The final argument that the public makes against games is that it stunts brain growth and development. This could not be further from the truth. Many games recall focus, quick second decision, strategy, and perseverance. A study conducted by cognitive neuroscientists at the University of Rochester found that development of the skill set in the virtual world is transferable to the real world as well. With such, the claim benefits go on and on. However, so do the negative perceptions that society has established with gaming, as I mentioned before. With games constantly evolving and becoming increasingly popular, perhaps in 20 years, we can be more certain of its long-term effects. 
But until then, we need to be patient. We need to be alert. We need to be open-minded. We need to rethink things. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, the beginning begins. Thank you.